If you don't know, you won't know. I'm your host with the most finding Nemo, a.k.a. Nemo Hoes. Archbishop Don Magic One, you gonna Mac all day or you gonna come on the show? Yo, got it. Y'all know what's going oh, down. So you from Memphis, Tennessee? Yeah, North Memphis. For real? Yeah. I love Memphis, Tennessee. Well, what you call it, Memphis, Tennessee? Yeah. Little my niggas, you understand them, me? Them prices ain't never been like that. I, I mean, know. but that's what we call it. You understand <laughs> me? An outsider yeah. can call it what he wants to. He don't know. Yeah. He ain't never been there. Yeah. <laughs> we called Memphis. What was it? Is Macon? What is it? Me? Yeah. What is it? Oh, making easy money, pimping holes and stuff. That's right. That's, oh, that's what it was. Shit. That's what Memphis all about. <laughs> yeah. Making easy money, pimping pimpin holes and yeah, style. Yeah, nigga. He yeah. juggled your motherfucking. We said Memphis. Look like how he juggled yeah. God. He bang. Yeah, yeah, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know you, nigga. You better. He supposed to know that. That's yeah. What it, Hello. I, he got a history of a lot of people giving out some great music in him. You know, Isaac Hayes. You know, Stacks music. Yeah, Stacks music. You know what I mean? Yeah, Al Bell, you know, bring it on, you know, just, you know, legendary thing, you know. Ain't B. that where Justin Timberlake from, too? Yeah, Justin, then I think he's from Memphis, a militant, mm -hmm. all of the same shit. Jazzy Faye? Yeah, Jazzy Faye. Yeah. Every you know, Presley. Juicy J? Juicy J, 3 6. Uh, 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 8 Ball and MJG? Boy. Yeah. Project Pat? Oh, yeah. man. Project Pat was one of the coldest motherfuckers to come out. You hear me? <laughs> you hear him? Don't, don't play no games, nigga. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Project Pat, that nigga come through with this shit. He was the first nigga ever. Him and Master P, them niggas had beats that went like this, nigga. I'm talking about going to real ignorant ass Southern club with straight niggas and chicken wings and, you know what I'm saying, just. <laughs> well, I want to congratulate you on the CMG distribution deal with Epic. And uh, CMG, I want you to let the people know what that is that they don't already know. Um, CMG. You know, um, it was a mixtape series how I started this shit off. Uh, back when DJ Drummer was doing Everybody Gangsta Grill. You know, I, I was one of the cats in line waiting to do it. So what, I done what, my first one. Gangsta Grill with Drama? Yeah. You was waiting in line? Yeah, you know, he had a lot of he motherfuckers. He had 100 niggas in line. In line. I had to, I had to pay saying? the nigga 5000 to jump the line. So I know <laughs> what you said. Yeah, Motherfucker, so, he would charge me $5,000 to jump the line. Nigga, I am who I am. <laughs> Are you not entertained? Go ahead, nephew. Sorry about that. Yeah, so after this shit, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to create my own shit. I'm going to create cocaine music. That's what it is. This shit addictive. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I'm mm. going to create my own mixtape series, and I'm going to get this shit hot. Mm -hmm. So I did Cocaine Music 1, and um, I didn't really think this shit was going to catch on as quick as it did before they wanted number two. And we just made it a, a, a mixtape series. That's what it came out to be. We up to Cocaine Music 7. You got to go overseas, though, love one, because overseas, you probably don't even know. You probably got a fan base over there and don't even know it. When yeah. I went to Japan, I didn't know but they love rap over there. Niggas pulled up in low riders, had braids in their hair, had the same kind of shirts and shit I had on. And basically, they was us. Yeah. Just Japanese, but them motherfuckers was us. Yeah. So I want you to go get your money everywhere. I don't want you to just be getting no paper bags in America when you can go outside of America and get a suitcase. Yeah. Well, they gonna know how to You did. Believe that. He done told them it's how to It's a big book difference it. between a paper bag and a suitcase, man. <laughs> I'd love to see you with that suitcase on the Instagram picture. <laughs> saying, Uncle Snoop, Wait you wasn't minute. lying, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> They'll give you a passport, won't they? Yeah, 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 I can get older. OK, you good. Man. Yeah, because some of the homies got child yeah. support issues. And yeah, all that. They be holding niggas' licenses and passport. I'm like, how a nigga can't go? Man, they got my license. For what? Child support? How much you owe? <laughs> 13, honey. <laughs> man, why you won't get a bitch 13 and up? Man, yeah, fuck that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> The homie from the al uh, alcoholics live over there, j Ro. That nigga live in Sweden. And he went over there and never came back. Every time we go there, we see that nigga. He get us weed and everything. <laughs> that nigga like, nope, I'm not coming back. I have a family. I, a family? God damn. I got this little thing on my show I got called Finish the Sentence. Right. So I'm going to start it and I want you to finish it. All right. I hate it when niggas act like hoes. Boy, don't we all? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> If I wasn't rapping, I'd be hustling. Mm. Well, you answered that motherfucker for I ain't fin. Ain't no I, other choice. I didn't get to the last <laughs> syllable of <laughs> that nigga heard. If I was hustling, yeah, <laughs> ain't no other God choice. Damn, nigga. That's all I know, huh? Hey. Well, I feel you, shit. The this way you work going back. That nigga probably yeah. already yeah. still hustling as quick as he said that motherfucker <laughs> hustling. <laughs> Who showed you the most love before you had a deal? Uh, 
Baby, baby and, and Slim, I say them niggas, I, I get them niggas the credit of taking me out the street. Mm -hmm. I was around them for every day. Game. You get what I'm saying? So Sponge. The money I want shit, what I seen them niggas doing, how I seen them work, you get what I'm saying? Picking it, up it, that the most important part. Yeah. I learned a lot of shit from Couldn't them. Pay yeah, for a lot that. of motivation from them, you know what I'm saying? That's something like you testified when you see different people work at it. You said that happened about uh, Tupac. That encouraged yeah. you, champ. Yeah, Tupac said. was a workaholic. You know, when you see somebody work ethic, how they do their thing, you know what I mean? On you. Like this nigga Tupac, he would make like three or four songs in a day. It's before niggas was doing that. It's when niggas would make one song a week. <laughs> nigga, every nigga in hip hop did it. I don't give a fuck who you was. Niggas would make one song and listen to that motherfucker all week, invite bitches to the studio, niggas to the studio, and niggas listen to that same motherfucking song, nigga, till the nigga say that shit's a hit. This nigga Tupac would make Three songs, for example, when we do the first song, everybody bust their verse. As soon as the song go off, that nigga don't even listen to it. He tell him, pull the next beat up. You engineer niggas, you mix that motherfucker on your own time. Pull the next song up. Next song up, niggas is writing, it's done. Pull that next beat up, boop. We get to the third song, then the niggas say, play back that first song we did. Yeah. Play back that second song we did. Play back that third song we did. Okay, now call some bitches. Now we got three songs to play for the hoes. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And it was a work ethic, see? I was looking at how this nigga making all these songs, but he was inspired, like... So now I learned how to make two or three songs a day and produce and tell niggas how to do this, and get on this and pop that and whoop that. When I didn't have that, because I was from the old school where, nigga, we make one song and we finna do bop to this motherfucker all week, maybe a month, fuck it. <laughs> Old yeah. school, for real though. Man, I want to thank you for coming by. Uh, Yo, got right. real shit though, loved one, because you could have been anywhere, but you chose to be here with us. And we love having real niggas on our show, especially when they're doing real things. Yeah. And um, as long as you're doing what you're doing and you need a place to get it off and to say what you want to say, nigga, we're going to leave the porch light on and you got the keys. You can get in whenever you want, however you like. If you ever need a vehicle to drive while you're out here, if you ever need some weed to smoke, a bitch to fuck, a place to stay, <clears throat> holla. Yeah. That's what we do. 100. Yeah, we that's a blessing. <laughs> oh, but that's, you know, that's how it be when you learn hospitality. You know how to lay it out for your you friends, heard it. you know what I mean? That's a blessing. So he covered it all so you don't have to ask for certain things. It's all there. This is Stormy Fronts reporting from Hotlanta. It's always sticky and humid and you don't know what to do with yourself. You know, it's muddy everywhere. So you know what we want you to do? Take off your tops and get your best girlfriend and have a mud fight. Invite your boyfriend, invite her boyfriend, invite your neighbor's boyfriend, who cares? Just make it nasty, it's the South. It's super hot, just get in that mud and take it all off. And when I mean make it nasty, I mean make it nasty, like. I'm sitting here with my lovely, lovely guest. Yes, a friend of mine and YouTube sensation, the wonderful Nikki Heaton. Hi. And how are you, beautiful? I'm doing pretty well, how are you? I'm working hard and hardly working. Can you imagine that? <laughs> <laughs> doing the same. Exactly, so let everybody know where you born and raised. Um, I was born in Geneva, Illinois, but all my family is still in South Africa. I moved to New York as soon as I graduated high school with my manager, and now I live in Miami. For real? Mm-hmm. You live in Miami? Yeah. Home of the heat? Of course. I think I like <laughs> it a lot better. For real, though. And what do you do for those who are unaware of what you do? You know, I know what you do, and the millions of people on YouTube know what you do, but for those who are watching my show that may have never heard you, what do you do? Well, basically, I play um, acoustic versions of popular rap songs, and I try to incorporate my own music in there too, but I think people really know who I am for covering Love Sosa and songs like that. So I play music, I write music, I compose, I songwrite, I sing. I do all of it, and I do it on YouTube. These bitches love Sosa, oh, and I know they're fucking with them always. You gon' get fucked over.
bitches love so so. So so. These bitches love so so. Chief Keep, you hear that? You better holler at her, Chief Keep, and quit bullshit, man. <laughs> you was on War Star Hip Hop. Yeah, about like four times. What? Do you know how hard it is to get on there? I know, and people ask us, like, how much did you pay for that? Like, no, they like they just did it by themselves. But see, that's when you good. Yeah. When World Star pick it up on their own. Cause yeah, you have to pay to get on there. Mm-hmm. Do you got a mixtape or album coming out? Um, at the moment, I'm working on my project. We're trying to make music for the people who have stood by me this whole time. Got you. So we have no problem doing it by ourselves, putting it out by ourselves. So hopefully we'll be able to deliver what the fans want soon. And they say that you learned how to sing listening to Diana Ross? Yeah, that's true. I actually learned from her uh, Greatest Hits CD. It was mm -hmm. a, I know it was a gold CD. And I bought that when I was, um, I think, five and a half. And I literally mimicked her voice until I could carry a tune. So I really kind of owe her for teaching me how to sing. Diana, we want to thank you for starting this beautiful lady's career. Thank you so much. And this is the, um, that was the first song CD that you bought? Mm-hmm, Diana Ross. This is the first record I bought right here. Hey! What you want me to do? You can ring my bell. Ring my bell. See, that's the first record I bought because that record right there was jamming in my neighborhood. I mean, ooh, it was jamming. And I went to the VIP, and I bought it on 45. That's when it was a little bitty record. Oh my God! Put the little yellow thing in the middle, component set, and let him bang all day. That's real. But we'll be back with more Nikki Heaton. <laughs> And that's one of my songs called Boss. And I'm a fucking boss. Yeah. You need me to come on there and drop a nice little rap. Oh my gosh, would you? I'll and beg. How? <laughs> it's a done dilly. Can you dig that? So is there anybody out there you want to shoot a shout out to or you know, speak to anybody on the world that's listening right now? It's over hundred million people watching. Oh my God, I didn't even know I'm that. lying like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a heart attack. Church, preach, tabernacle.